Hello everyone. In this video we will be taking a look at torque and the role it plays in static equilibrium. Torque is the rotational equivalent of force. Just as forces can result in a linear acceleration, torque can give objects rotational acceleration. In other words, torque is what makes objects rotate around a pivot point. The symbol we use for torque is the Greek letter tau and is measured in newton meters. The equation for torque tells us that it is equal to the radius from the pivot point multiplied by the force, multiplied by the sine of the angle between the radial vector and the force. Along with torque, in this unit we also run into the idea of static equilibrium. The static part implies that things are not moving or rotating in any way, and the equilibrium part implies that it will remain in that state. So with no motion or rotation, all accelerations must be zero, which means that our net forces as well as net torques must all sum to zero. These end up being the equations that we set up in order to solve for any missing information in static equilibrium problems. Let's start with a basic torque problem. In this question, we are using a wrench to tighten a bolt and are asked to find the torque that is applied to the bolt. When working torque problems, we must choose what we call a pivot point, the point that rotation is going to be based around and we measure our radius from. Since this question is asking for the torque on the bolt, that makes the bolt itself the obvious pivot point. From that pivot point, if we draw a line radially outward that connects to where the force is being applied, we can see that the force in this example makes a perfect right angle with that radius. Meanwhile, the distance from the pivot point to this force is clearly indicated to be 12 centimeters. So since it's just asking for the torque here, we can just plug in. We know the radius is 12 centimeters, which we would want to convert to 12 meters. The force is just 20 newtons. And we have to multiply by the sine of the angle, which as we discussed is 90 degrees for this one. In this case, we get a torque equal to 2.4 newton meters. So there's the torque for part A, where we are applying a force that is perpendicular to the wrench itself. But now let's move on to part B, where the force is at a different angle. We will still consider our pivot point here at the bolt, but if we draw a line radially outward to where the force connects, we can see that the 20 degree angle that they're giving us isn't actually connecting back to that radius. This means that the angle that we would actually want to use in our torque equation would either be this acute angle on the left of our force, or the obtuse angle that includes the 20 degrees on the right of our force. Either of these angles can be obtained by making note that the dotted line that the angle is measured from does make a right angle with our radius. So the angle on the left is 20 degrees short of 90, or in other words, 90 minus 20, which would give us 70 degrees or the angle on the right can be found by going 20 degrees beyond 90, or in other words, 90 plus 20, which would give us 110. Due to the nature of the sine function, either of these angles is acceptable. Since we'll get the same answer either way, I'll just use the 70 degree angle. So torque will be equal to the radius still being 0.12 meters. Force is still 20 newtons. However, now the angle that we plug into the sine will be 70 degrees. Doing this calculation gives us a torque equal to approximately 2.26 newton meters. You'll notice that this torque is a little bit lower than the one we got in part A. The way we would interpret this is that maximum torque is generated by applying a force at a perpendicular angle. And since torque generates rotation, this means that if you apply a perpendicular force, you end up causing more rotation than you would if you were at an angle. Next, let's take a look at an equilibrium problem. Two people are balancing on a seesaw as shown, with the person on the left having a mass of 60 kilograms, and the balance board having a mass of 80 kilograms. Part A asks, find the mass of the person on the right. So let's label some stuff here. We know the person on the left, I'll call M1 is equal to 60 kilograms. 
the mass of the person on the right, I'll call m2, that is what we are looking for in part a, and the mass of the balance board, which I'll call capital M, is 80 kilograms. In this question, we are told that the people are balancing on this balance board, so everything is going to stay still as long as they remain still. This tells us that this is a static equilibrium problem. Because we are in static equilibrium, that means all of our forces and torques must balance out to zero. In these types of problems, we want to draw all the forces acting on the object, which in this case will be the board of the seesaw. Since both people are on the seesaw, it will experience the weight of both of them. The board will experience M1G on the left side and M2G on the right side. Since the board itself has mass, it will also be experiencing a force of gravity. Now that we are in our torque unit and accounting for rotation, we aren't going to be able to simplify the board down to a point in our free body diagram. Otherwise, we would lose that radial information that we need for torque. So for this class, we always assume that the force of gravity acts in the center of an object. In this case, the middle of the board, which is where it is being balanced from, will experience the for gravitational force mg. What other forces are acting on the board? Well, so far, everything is going downward, so there must be some force keeping it held up for things to not move. That is where the balance in the middle comes from. It is in contact with the board and keeping it from falling, so there will be some normal force upwards at that point of contact. With that, we have now drawn all the forces that would be applied to this board. So for our next steps, we will now construct our net force and torque equations. Fortunately, in this problem, we have no forces in the x direction. So we don't get an equation from that. We just get 0 equals 0. However, we have multiple forces in the y direction to add up. And when we add those up, we know they must all add to 0. When adding vertical forces, the convention is to choose up as positive. So since the normal force is upwards, that gets a positive m. Meanwhile, all the others are downwards, so I'll do minus m1g minus capital M g minus m2g. All those added have to give me 0. And for our last potential equation, where we sum up all the torques equal to 0 so that there's no rotation, there are some added steps here. First of all, when dealing with torque, we always need to choose a pivot point. In static equilibrium problems like this, it is up to us to choose a convenient pivot point. There might be multiple options, but the one we generally want to choose is to put it at a location that will eliminate the most unknown forces in our problem. For example, in this problem, if I choose my pivot point at the center of the seesaw board, both the normal force and the weight of the board itself are located exactly at that pivot point. So the radius for both of those torques would be zero, meaning they don't actually contribute to my net torque equation. If I go radially outward to the right, that is a distance or radius of four meters until I hit the M2G force. So the torque from the second person should be equal to that distance I went from the pivot point, which would be 4 meters, based on my choice of pivot point, times the force, which is m2g, times the sine of the angle that that black line I drew for the radius makes with our force. In this case, that is a perfect right angle, so 90 degrees. However, another thing to keep track of with torque you want to decide which direction of rotation, clockwise or counterclockwise, you are calling positive. The general convention is to call counterclockwise as positive and clockwise as negative. So which direction does my force of gravity want to make this seesaw rotate in? It looks to me like that is clockwise, so negative. I will want to put a negative out in front of this calculation. I can do something similar for the first person on the left draw my line for my radius here. I have gone a distance of three meters, so torque from the first person equals three for my radius, m1g for my force, and again I end up seeing a perfect 90 degree angle, so sine of 90 degrees. When I think about what sine this torque should get, what is the direction that this force makes my seesaw want to rotate around my pivot point in? 
Well, it looks like I would go counterclockwise in this case, which means the sine of this torque should be positive. Since I can go ahead and say the sine of 90 is just 1, adding up my torques will give me 3m1g minus 4m2g has to equal 0. If I look at my equations here and remind myself what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the mass of the person on the right. So that is this m2. Both equations have that. Do I have everything else I need to solve for m2? Well, let's think about my fy equation first. I have both the m1 and the capital M. G is always 9.8. However, I don't know this normal force. That is an unknown force that the base of this seesaw is exerting on the board, which I have no information on. So with two things I don't know in the first equation, that tells me I don't want to use this equation yet. Meanwhile, if I look at my torque equation, I have m1 and g, and I'm just missing m2, so it looks like I have enough information here to get m2. So let's focus on this equation and see if we can solve it for m2. If I move things around, I get 3m1g equals 4m2g. In order to get m2 alone, I would divide by 4g, which tells me that m2 should be equal to since the g's cancel out, I would just get 3 fourths of m1. Plugging in m1, which is 60 kilograms, I find that m2 should be equal to 45 kilograms. So there is the answer for part A. Next for part B, which is asking us to find the force that the base of the seesaw must exert in the middle. That is referring to the normal force, as we called it. We've already seen that normal force in the net y equation, so let's go back to that. Here's our net y force equation again. This time we have all the masses and are looking for the normal force. So if I move everything but the normal force over to the right side, I get m1g plus capital Mg plus m2g which I could simplify into adding up all the masses together, then multiplying by gravity. We know that m1 is 60, the mass of the board was given to us as 80, and we just found the mass of the second person, which is 45. Multiply that by 9.8, and we should get our normal force, which is the force of the base. When we do this algebra, we find that the force of the base has to be 1,813 newtons. It is worth noting that not every static equilibrium problem will require you to make all three of these net force and torque equations. However, it is a possibility depending on how many unknowns you have.